Hello everyone. My name is Judith Matthew and I'm a grade two teacher at the elementary school, the Manahat Elementary School. It is located in Boston, Massachusetts. So thank you so much for joining our SEL, Social Emotional Learning Webinar. So we, many of us know that SEL is a top priority in Massachusetts. So that being said, our goal in tonight's webinar is to expand on what we already know and practice in our schools on SEL and to share new materials and resources that have always been available to us. Let's get started. And I am going to pass it over to Carolyn, who will do the introduction. Thank you. And thank you, Amy and Judith. Um, you may notice that there is a little emblem at the bottom of the screen, Educator, Ambassador, NEPM, and GBH. Uh, Amy and Judith are both uh, Educator Ambassadors, and this is the first of several webinars that we will be hosting this year that are truly conceived of and organized by Educator Ambassadors. So kudos to Amy and Judith for um, coming up with the topic, feeling so passionate about it, and working very hard to put this together. So thank you. All right. Um, I am Carolyn Jacobs. I'm uh, in the education department at GBH. You may be familiar with GBH. It's Boston's public uh, television station and much more than uh, just television. We are the producers of many iconic series you see across the country on your own public television stations, series like Nova, Masterpiece, American Experience, Frontline, Molly of Denali for Kids, lots of programs for kids. They all start in Boston, and then they are um, distributed out through the public, uh, public television network. Um, a little few housekeeping items. Um, we are recording, we will be sending out the link to the recording along with links to many other things in the follow-up email that will come out to you tomorrow. You are welcome to share those links with uh, your colleagues. We are using Zoom webinar as our platform and only the presenters have the uh, are on camera and have the microphone. I want to thank Denise Olson, who's Director of Marketing in GBH in the Education Department. She is in the chat. She will be posting links and kind of calling our attention to things. So thank you, Denise. Please, please feel free to interact with each other in the chat and with the presenters. We'll do our best to answer your questions. We have reserved a bit of time at the end. I want to acknowledge that many of you submitted questions and topics ahead of time as part of your registration form. In fact, we have over 100 um, suggestions of topics, so we know that this is something that we really need to pay attention to and do more work in. Uh, some of the um, common themes of your questions and comments related to uh, relate to coping, trauma, motivation, balancing SEL with content requirements, sharing the importance of SEL with staff and colleagues, relaxation strategies, parent buy-in, et cetera. So a lot of what you've asked for is incorporated into what we're doing. And then all of that information is very important for us as we plan more presentations down the road and continue to do our work. So thank you for that. In the education department at GBH, we produce resources for pre-K to 12 and we give everything away. And the, the resources that we produce for um, public distribution for education are uh, typically published on this website, PBS Learning Media. I'm curious if you are already fans or already familiar with PBS Learning Media, let us know in the chat. If not, we certainly hope that you go to the site and explore. It is free. It is forever free. There's no premium level. It is free. 
There are thousands of resources for pre-K to 12 across the curriculum, but we're going to be showing you many resources that are drawn from this platform, from PBS Learning Media, specifically for SEL. And the presenters, Amy and Judith, have done a great job of combing through the, the website and choosing resources carefully that they want to share with you. And you'll have links to all of that in, the, in a resource document that will come out to you with the recording link tomorrow. And I'll also be able to show you a little bit what that resource document looks like. All right, so our presenters tonight, um, we are very, very pleased to have Lucinda Mills with us. Lucinda came to us uh, through Judith. And uh, thank you, Judith, for turning us on to Lucinda. Lucinda is an SEL advocate and consultant, and she has been with Boston Public Schools for 21 years in various roles, but she is currently a district social worker. She runs trainings on ESL, ESL, SEL, I've got the acronym a little backwards, trauma, stress management, restorative justice, and de-escalation. Lucinda was an Educator of the Year awardee for Boston Public Schools in 2022, and it's been a pleasure to get to know her. Thank you, Lucinda. Amy and Judith, uh, both, as I mentioned, Educator Ambassadors with GBH. They also have some other things in common. Uh, they both work at dual language schools. Amy is a veteran elementary school librarian, now teaches at a K-5 dual language school in, in Waltham, Massachusetts. She is a soon-to-be published author of the children's picture book, William Entman, A Baker's Baker. And I'm sure you're all familiar with the Entmans that are at the end of the grocery aisle. Um, you probably have your favorite, and I imagine that that's what the book is about, but we'll learn more about that. It's soon to be published. We don't even, uh, we can't show anything yet, but it's coming soon. Amy's favorite activities are uh, reading, no surprise there, writing, cycling, baking, and um, again, she's an, an educator ambassador, and um, we've had a lot of uh, good times getting to know each other over this past year and a half. Judith teaches second grade at a Haitian dual language school. In 2022, she co-authored and published the first Haitian bilingual children's book, Soup Jumu, Not Just a Soup. And it is available on Amazon. The link to that is in the resource document. She holds a master's degree in elementary ed and a bachelor's in social psychology. And in her spare time, she also enjoys baking and gardening. And again, she is an educator ambassador. So welcome all and thank you very much. All right, the agenda this evening is pretty straightforward. Um, Lucinda is going to kick things off. She's going to do what for some of you might be a little refresher for others that might be new, talking a little bit about just what SEL is, the competencies for SEL and the importance of it, why it matters. And then Judith and Amy will take over, and they're going to go through four of the SEL traits. Um, empathy, let's see if I get this right. Empathy, collaboration, self-regulation, and perseverance. And for each of those traits, they have resources and uh, comments to talk about why they're important to teach. And then I'll come back on at the very end for some final remarks. So uh, I'm going to turn things over to Lucinda. Hi, good evening, everyone, and welcome, welcome, welcome. My name is Lucinda Mills. I am a district social worker out of the Office of Social Work for Boston Public Schools. I'm excited to be here this evening to talk about a topic that is near and dear to my heart, SEL. I consider myself an SEL advocate. SEL ambassador, emotions teacher, anything SEL, that is me, okay? So let's start off with some background around SEL. You know, in education, we love buzzwords, we love acronyms, and a lot of times we go around using acronyms and we assume everyone should know what we are talking about. And sometimes that's not the case. So SEL is social emotional learning. 
SCL is the process whereby children and adults develop essential social and emotional skills, knowledge, and attitudes related to self-awareness, responsible decision-making, relationship skills, social awareness, self-management. I like to say SEL is life skills, life skills that children need, life skills that adults need, and we all need SEL skills. Since the pandemic, it has become even more important for us to focus on SEL skills because in many of our schools, we have seen the regression in social skills, we've seen the regression in academic skills. And if we take the time to teach SEL skills, it will help with academics. Next slide. So here are the key five SEL competencies that comes from CASEL. CASEL stands for the Collaborative for Academic, Social and Emotional Learning. And many of you I know must have heard about CASEL, heard about the five competencies, the self-awareness, the self-management, social awareness, relationship skills, and responsible decision-making. So if you wanna take a moment and put in the chat, if you get a chance, which one of these SEL skills did you use today? Did you do self-awareness? Was it self-management? Was it social awareness? Was it relationship skills? Was it responsible decision-making? And some of you might've used several or all of the competencies today, because guess what? By showing up here tonight, you use responsible decision-making skills. You made a decision to be here with us tonight and here you are. So I would take it a step further. So I see a lot of people responding, which is good. Think about your students in the classroom. What skills have they used today? And what skills are you intentionally teaching your students? What are some SEL skills that you are teaching your students? Because I feel like it's more important right now. It doesn't matter if you have the SEL curriculum, the SEL program in your school, in your classroom, you can still teach SEL. You can teach SEL practices. You can use SEL interventions because just like we teach reading, we teach writing, we teach social studies, SEL is teachable skills. We can teach our students SEL skills. Next slide. So Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Many of us have heard about Maslow. And guess what? More than ever since the pandemic, our students need to feel the safety needs. They need to feel that sense of belonging. They need to feel loved. The security and safety, the intimate relationships, friendships, feeling of accomplishment, all of this can be accomplished when we teach SEL skills. We have many educators here tonight, and many of you are probably familiar with Linda Albert's work on cooperative discipline, where her research talks about children want to feel caring, they want to feel like they can make a contribution, and they want to know that, guess what? We, the adults, really love them, right? So they want to be able to contribute to our classroom communities. They want to know that we care about them, and they want to know, hey, how do I fit in? How do I belong? If we care about school climate, school culture in our schools, SCL is where it starts. And many of our school districts are talking about MTSS, our popular acronym again, multi-tiered system of supports. So when we look at that MTSS model in education, we wanna put SEL right at the first tier one, where it doesn't matter if we're talking about students with disabilities, our general education students, our English language learners, our immigrant population, SEL skills are skills all of our students need. Next slide. So this slide just breaks down further for us. What are the specifics? If we're teaching 
the five competencies tour with students, where does this overlap? Where does it go? So I'm going to highlight a few. So on the self-awareness, we really want to teach students how to identify emotions. On the social awareness, empathy, and you're going to hear later on a little bit more about empathy. Responsible decision-making. We really want to help students know, know how to problem solve, how to identify problems, and be good decision makers. Self-management, we want to show them how to manage some of the impulses many of our students may show us uh, come with in the classroom. Relationship skills, we want to help our students be able to communicate. We not only want to teach them about emotions, but they need to be able to communicate those emotions to us. They need to be able to socially engage. They need to build friendships. They need to work in groups. They need to be able to work in teams. All of this is all under the umbrella of social emotional learning. Next. SEL matters and so does the data, right? It's important for us to look at what does the research say? What does the data say about teaching SEL? So again, this slide is from CASEL. It shows us first, 29% of students who feel like this school provides a supportive and encouraging environment. 83% of students who make academic gains have done so while participating in an SEL program with an academic component. That is huge. So one, educators, we should not see SEL as a silo, as another piece over here that we can't use. We need to have it interwoven into our curriculum, into ELE, into social studies. It should be part of the fabric of our school day. We should be using SEL as part of our daily routine. Next slide. Trauma and SEL practices. We all know that all of us have many students in our classroom, in our schools, who have dealt with trauma, who have experienced trauma, and SEL is another way that we can help being trauma-informed and present information to our students. We want to create predictable routines. We want to build strong and supportive relationships. We want to empower students' agency. We want to support the development of self-regulation skills. And we want to provide opportunities to explore individual as well as community identities. Next. So again, our research shows that SEL matters. So I know in school districts, a lot of times, hey, one year you have program A that comes in. The next year, huh, let's bring program B in. This is, this is what's hot. But guess what? SEL is here to stay. So it doesn't matter, like I said earlier, it doesn't matter that if you have that particular curriculum in your classroom or in your school, we need to be able to implement the practices. As you see with student academics, SEL levels predict high school and college completion. What do we want as educators? We want for our students to be able to graduate high school and to go on to college. And students with strong social emotional competencies have greater academic achievement within K to 12 and college. So fostering SEL as early as preschool has both immediate and long-term impact. So again, we can start with early childhood all the way up to high school with SEL skills. And when we even look at ourselves as adults, many employers value having students, adults with SEL skills. Next. Families are children's first teachers. So with any SEL program, strategies, practices we're doing in our schools, we need to partner with our parents, our caregivers. The same skills that we're teaching in the classroom, we need to involve and have our parents learn about the same 
five SEL competencies. At home, they learn about feelings. They begin to learn about relationships, taking responsibility, communication, and respect. So as educators in schools, we want to partner with our families and really send, do that home to school communication, do some workshops, send information home about SEL so that our parents learn about SEL as well. Next. What does this look like in the school setting? So I'm gonna highlight a few. When we talk about understanding and being able to talk about our own feelings, the child has the ability to recognize and overcome anxiety about a test or project. When we talk about being able to form relationships and friendships with peers, with teachers, the child can thoughtfully ask and answer questions in the classroom. They feel connected to their teacher. Again, I said at the beginning, it's relationship skills. We're building connections with students and we can do a lot of this by teaching SCL. Can cooperate with others. The child shares materials or toys in the classroom. Next. Classrooms are the perfect place for SCL practices. We can start with having them, I am feeling, how are you feeling today? And if we look at the second image, we can create spaces in our classroom, calm down areas, relaxation areas for students. We can create welcoming spaces for students to come and sit down and relax. Next. We wanna make sure we include student voice as part of SEL. We wanna help students feel like they're part of the classroom community. We wanna have welcoming practices in our classroom, like morning meetings, meet and greet, check-ins, how are you feeling, office to five on a scale of one to five. Um, where are you? How are you feeling? One being feeling really good five not so good and have students be able to just give you that fist to five. Turn and talk, we can use turn and talk and really incorporate a lot of academics, English language arts, talk about how characters in a story or a poem are feeling and really relate it back to the student. Meditation moment, take a moment for students to practice just relaxation techniques some calm moments. Movement breaks, we can have moments where we can incorporate students' cultural self, playing certain music and having them do some dance break. Use um, activities such as go noodle with students. Make SEL part of your classroom routine and not have it as something, hey, this is a silo police and now I have to do SEL. We wanna teach calm down and breathing techniques. So a lot of times when I'm working with students, they're like, oh no, it doesn't work for me, Miss Mills. Breathing doesn't work because a lot of times those students are go, that doesn't work. No, we have to be intentional and teach them some specific ways, some strategies for breathing. So here's one quick one that you can do with students. Hold up your hand, inhale up, exhale, inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. Hmm, students can do this with their hands here or they can, if they're having a bad day, they can put their hands in their lap and they can take those deep breaths and just trace the fingers and inhale, exhale. And we can also spend time teaching them how to, to put hands on their tummies, take a deep breath, feel the diaphragm rise, exhale out. Okay, next. SCL requires practice and modeling. Guess what? We have to teach, we have to model, we have to practice, and we have to reteach. So the cartoon says, what are you doing here? I'm practicing waiting for the school bus. Is that something you have to practice? It is if you want to be good at it. So SEL skills is something we need to practice if we want our students to be good at it. 
So SEL is that umbrella. And under the umbrella is many specific skills that students will learn. They will learn about empathy. They will learn about perseverance. They will learn self-regulation and collaboration skills. And now I will turn it over to Judith and Amy so they can expand more on those SEL skills. Thank you, Lucinda. So I'm Amy Salinger. I'm gonna be talking about um, our first trait tonight. And our first trait is empathy. So just a little bit of background information. When Judith and I met in person for the first time and we decided to work together and we decided to do um, work on the topic SEL, we brainstormed multiple traits, there's so many, but we chose empathy and we chose the other traits, which we'll get to shortly, because we felt like these are just really important and we can model them every single day. So we all know that teaching empathy yields a positive classroom culture, strengthens our communities and prepares students to be responsible leaders. Empathy is the ability to understand and share the feelings of others. So it's important to validate and confirm that if your student or even adult is not feeling just the way you would hope they would be feeling, something has come up unexpectedly, you really want to show and model to other students that you can hopefully try to make that person feel better and feel like that they can lean on you and explain how they feel and just really maybe not saying anything at all but just really reaching out and nodding your head and saying oh it's okay so empathy is something that we see and hear um, every day um, in many schools um, no matter the ages um, you can go to the next slide so in each of these traits um, we decided, Judith and I, that we were going to um, display um, images because we all know today that the power of images and visual literacy is so um, relevant in our lives. And just as writing literacy and reading literacy is important, the ability to analyze pictures and images are also. So pictures like the ones you're noticing right now are great to display around your classroom or the hallway, even the bathroom, and trying to get your students to remark on these images and to build that vocabulary um, using new words and adjectives and verbs and getting them to practice um, all kinds of ways to express themselves based on what they see and how it relates to their own lives. So here on this slide, are resources that you will get, as Carolyn mentioned earlier, in a resource document um, tomorrow, are links to all kinds of um, lesson plans, videos in PBS learning media. In addition to these great resources that you can choose from, K, kindergarten, grades one through five, there are also um, a few books, um, and there's so many out there, but we decided on selecting three books that really resonate and bring out the traits that we're talking about tonight. So the first book is this one right here. Adrian Simcox does not have a horse. This is a great book because it's all about perspective and getting to empathize with other people. You really need to get in their shoes and get into their perspective and their feelings and their views on why they're feeling the way they do. So this is a great tool to share, a great read aloud. And you can find these books that you're looking at right now on your screen at most public libraries and on Amazon and other um, digital platforms. So this video is the one, one of my favorites. It's short, it has great optics. It has um, a, a presenter explaining to students um, why the brain um, benefits from reading. And not only does it give reading, not only gives a person's brain a great workout, and you can compare that to going to the gym or the playground, but it also builds empathy for characters who may be going through the same challenges and situations that your own students may be experiencing. And there's a plethora of 
great fiction out there these days and nonfiction that really resonate with all kinds of people's backgrounds and cultures, ethnicities, and what better way to um, promote um, empathy is to sharing literacy. This is another activity in our resources. This is a bingo activity. This is great for younger grades and it comes in Spanish as well. Uh, so in English or Spanish, you can print it out. It's all free. It comes in the color form. It comes in the black and white form and your students can practice these kinds of um, kind acts of kindness, uh, maybe for a fun Friday activity or uh, indoor recess activity or really whenever you feel in the moment that we you it's a great way to expose your students to showing empathy and kindness and sharing and caring and i think we're going to go on to our next trait There we go. Okay, there you go. And Judith is gonna share with you about self-regulation. Thank you so much, Amy. Again, my name is Judith and I am a grade two um, teacher at the Manor Hunt Elementary School. I'm going to talk about self-regulation. We all know that many of our students do struggle with self-regulation. And we also know that many of us know that self-regulation means the ability to control oneself. So why is it important? Why self-regulation is important? It improves learning outcome at school. It fosters a um, better relationship with others. It helps control impulses and it helps the students um, to stay focused on goals. And let's look at the quote at the bottom, just like the quote says, if you ever find yourself needing a source of inspiration for self-control, just remember Jackie Robinson and use him as your source of strength. Really what the quote is basically saying, think um, we all know what Jackie Robinson um, went through when he was on the field, the hard time that um, how rude they were to him, the hardship, the hard time he had. But despite all of that, he was able to maintain his self-control. He was able like to maintain his self-control so he could achieve what he was there to achieve. So we wanna make sure we are able to like Lucinda said, teach our students, our children, how to self-regulate themselves so they can be successful. Next slide, please. Like Amy mentioned, images can convey a very important messages. And we know as many of us educators, it's really hard to like, you know, have like another topic like to teach. We do have a busy schedule, but guess what? SCL does not have to take like a full period. It can be done in 15 minutes. We can use images to teach SCL. We can ask um, our students to look at the images, make some observation, for example, like this one here, we can ask them like, okay, how can we use this image to calm down? And again, I just wanna mention that um, SEL does not have to be just in the classroom. It can be other places too. For example, when they are in the hallway, teaching students about like self-regulation, that way they can have that tool and they can be use it and they can use it at any, anywhere when it, when there's a need to be used. For example, if they are waiting in the hallway and for to use a water fountain and we feel like they're getting like a little bit hyper, we can um, remind them like, let's practice some calm breathing while they are waiting. Next slide, please. This is another technique that can be used as well. They can count to 10, take a deep breath and again, as Lucinda mentioned, you have to model and it has to happen constantly for them to understand. Next slide, please. In addition to those images, 
We also have like some um, wonderful resources from PBS Learning Media. As Carolyn mentioned earlier, they are free for you to use. And we have like some books. We have some books also. Many of them are like bilingual. And one of my favorite is when Sophie gets angry, really, really angry. The character Sophie, Sophie became very angry and but Sophie was able to understand why she was angry and she managed to find ways to calm herself down. This is one of the video. It's a very short video, 35 seconds long. We can use it at any time after recess when we feel like there's a need for it to be used. And again, there are many other video, short video at the bottom that we can use for calm, to calm our body down. And now I'm going to turn it over to Amy. Amy is going to talk to you about collaboration. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you, Judith. So yeah, so we've chosen um, empathy, we chose self-regulation and our third trait we're going to um, share with you is collaboration. So collaboration is another word that we hear a lot in schools, um, especially among staff, um, but in words like cooperation and teamwork and partnership and turn and talk with a partner. Those are words that your students may hear often. So we chose the quote by the soccer player um, Pele, no individual can win a game by himself. And not only did we like the, the wording that he expressed in this quote all about working together in teamwork, but also think about how students um, may know um, who the person giving the quote is. And so, so many kids these days participate in soccer um, and organize teams or at recess and having a quote available um, in the hallway or the classroom or um, near the cafeteria of somebody um, that students can really relate to and it's meaningful to them and having more images to support those the, the wording that you want to express and convey. Um, that's what that's what really modeling the quote is um, through visual literacy and, and reading literacy. And of course, modeling in the classroom in real time. So looking at these images, we have Molly of Denali, a PBS kid character. And you can bring out the relationship of the students or the children working together in, this, in these pictures. And what did they accomplish? What was their goal? Um, how did they work together? Where did they work together? Why did they work together? And really building that vocabulary and those and those um, getting students to respond in full length um, sentences, um, posing those kinds of questions is a great way to get students talking um, and practicing that vocabulary. Collaboration on the playground, working together, um, sharing, um, taking another one's perspective, um, the teamwork, um, partnership. We're working in concert, um, collaboration in the lunchroom. Um, we like this picture because um, I think it speaks to students on the third, fourth, and fifth grade um, levels. And how are they helping each other? How are they working together? How are they um, supporting each other in um, a, a non-classroom setting? So modeling the vocabulary, showing images, Talking about working together as a team, a lot of students today may not be able to participate in after school organized activities um, for various reasons. So promoting that teamwork philosophy in the classroom is, is a great way to, to get kids to feel like they're part of that school classroom community. So we can go on to the next slide and here we have more resources to share with you. Again, they're all from PBS Learning Media and we picked the ones that you see um, where the links are. And again, I know in the chat box, there's been some questions about, can you have access to these links? And 
as Carolyn mentioned earlier, you'll get a resource document sent to your inbox tomorrow with these links. And it gives you a chance to really dig deeper in PBS learning media as well. So here we have Arthur. Now as a librarian, I've had other librarians say to me, well, kids these days don't know Arthur. He's from a long time ago. Well, that's true. However, the challenges and problems and the problem solving that Arthur and his friends um, demonstrate in these episodes and in the, in the books about Arthur um, are the same issues and challenges um, and scenarios that you see happening every day today. So those kinds of um, experiences and those kinds of issues and problems don't go away. They're not dated. So I really encourage you to um, take a peek at all the Arthur um, media um, and lesson plans, the videos, the images, the books, the activities um, in PBS learning media because um, I, I, if kids yes, yesteryear enjoyed it, I think kids today will enjoy it too. Um, so even though it may be a little bit dated, he's not that dated. <laughs> um, and then in addition, I put out some books that I think were great to um, complement collaboration. And I have one with me right now, it's Sadiq. And he um, is part of this um, wonderful series. It's great for second graders and third graders for um, to really develop those literacy skills that kids are getting at that grade level. But the content is great. He and his friends are working together to create a community garden. And there are illustrations and glossary and chapter by chapter. It's because it is a chapter book. So not only is Sadiq and the Community Garden a great um, book to promote for cooperation, collaboration, but the other books you see here are really lovely as well. And again, public library, um, online digital um, platforms um, that we have in the research document you can, you can access or um, you can order them on your own. Thank you so much, Amy. So I am going to share with you our last traits, I believe, for this evening, perseverance. Perseverance is one of the keys to success in achieving a goal. And it is another important trait that we want to help students to master because we know that children who persevere, they believe that they are able, they can master their environment. They know they can handle challenges. They see themselves as focused and determined. They set goals and they work toward in achieving them. And they are more willing to take risks in trying new and difficult situations. Perseverance basically is, is failing 19 times and you know that you will succeed the 20th time. It's a matter like of practicing and not giving up. Next slide, please. And again, pictures, images, they do carry strong messages. This is one of the image that we can use with upper grades. Look at the quote, a river cuts through rock, not because of its power, but because of its persistence. We can ask students like for them, like what can they aim for? Ask them the question, what can you aim for from this quote? And ask them, if they could think of a goal that they would like to accomplish. Next slide. And again, perseverance, traits, those traits, they don't have to be limited to the classroom. We can use other places. For example, during recess, we can use recess as a time to teach kids how to persevere. We can ask them to think of a, maybe like a game or an activity they would like to master. We have them, it's a matter of teaching them and showing them how like when you practice and how to monitor your progress and over a period of time, you will get better at it. Same thing, monkey ball can be used for those who would like to master that skill. Next slide. We also have some wonderful resources. There are many wonderful resources available on PBS Learning Media for you to, to use. And we also have some great books. 
those three books here, they are all realistic fiction and they teach about perseverance. Many of our students will be able to see themselves. They will be able to make self, um, self to text connection. And these books, they share, they use examples, everyday life examples, how like many hardship, like many families, um, the hardship, like some of the many families um, um, endure. And also what they do to overcome those hardship to perseverance. And this is a short video that you can use to teach students about perseverance. It's about a, a character who was having difficulty building a tent and the character found out if they persevere, they will be able to do it. And that's what they did. They persevered, they tried many times and they were able to accomplish their goal. And now I'm going to turn it over to Amy and Amy is going to share with you two of her favorite resources. Okay, thanks Judith. Um, yeah, so I think we actually saw them, but I'll just remind everyone again. Um, there was a video in the empathy slide um, about um, how the brain really benefits from reading um, your brain on books from Spot on Science. There it is right there on your screen, if you can see that. And um, it's, it's a short video. I think it's great to show our, um, all members of your class and, and for those students who uh, may complain about reading, um, I challenge you to show that video. And after that, you know, have a great selection of reading material um, at all different reading levels, all different interests, all different genres to choose from because, um, and I just, I really thought it was an effective um, form of um, media um, that's available on PBS Learning Media. And um, Judith, do you want to share what one of your favorites um, resources is with everybody? Sure, I can share one of my favorite. One of my favorite is, let's see, the first one. Why is it my favorite? Because it's a worksheet activity and it's very engaging and we can use it in the classroom and students can work with a partner to share about like ways, like they can um, show like self-regulation. And now I'm going to turn it over to Kelvin who will give the final remarks. Thank you. Thank you so much, Amy, Judith, and Lucinda. Um, you've heard them talk about the resource document, and I just wanted to show you uh, a part of this resource document. I'm sure the link is in the chat, and you'll also be getting it tomorrow. Uh, we've broken down the resources that our presenters uncovered, along with many others, in a document that is organized by uh, trait. So these are the links to the PBS Learning Media resources under empathy that you heard Amy talk about. And then here are the book recommendations that Amy mentioned. And we have those for each of the sections. There are also links to the uh, castle, for example, some of the research that Lucinda mentioned. And then Lucinda sent us um, another document of lots of book covers uh, uh, for SEL. And so we included them in the document also. So you have um, a year's worth of reading uh, right in this document. You don't need to go any further. And remember, we have a librarian in the house and, and two children's book authors in the house. And it's just a wealth of information and so wonderful to have someone vet things and then uh, share them with um, share them with us. So thank you. All right, this is just a quick reminder as we're winding down that what you saw this evening, the resources you saw plus thousands more are available on the free website PBS Learning Media, which is co-produced by GBH and PBS. 
We hope you check it out. Let us know what you think. Um, in addition to what you saw this evening, there are collections of resources. And a collection in our world just means that under one URL, one banner in the on PBS Learning Media, there is a group of resources that are um, curated around a theme or um, a show or a topic or whatever. So there is a Molly of Denali collection that is just wonderful. Molly of Denali is in a current a public media program produced by GBH featuring Molly, who was the first animated indigenous character. And she's um, very curious and has lots of things going on in her life involving her friends and the educational tie-in, which there always is in public media programs is informational text. And there are also um, a lot of the programs address both science and social studies standards. Uh, you heard Amy mention Arthur. There are many, many resources on PBS Learning Media from Arthur that are current and not so current, but all fitting for um, getting along, compassion, empathy, et cetera. Don Quixote is another. And again, you'll have the links to all of these in that resource document. Um, here are some others that are very specific to SEL, other collections. I haven't seen Alma's Way yet. I don't know if anyone has any experience with Alma's Way. That's a PBS Kids production. Dance to Success and uh, talk about, uh, PBS Kids talk about uh, some of Amy and Judith's choices were drawn from these collections. And I had never seen Dance to Success before, um, Amy. So I'm glad that I discovered that, thanks to you. And then I wanted to showcase just a couple of other uh, collections that are not necessarily SEL, but we know that uh, many of you as elementary teachers teach all topics and uh, you're working SEL into all of them, but some of you um, need to teach science, you need to teach math, you need to teach social studies, et cetera. And there is a wonderful collection on PBS Learning Media called Bringing the Universe to America's Classrooms. And it offers resources for K to 12 on topics related to earth and space science. So you think about weather, climate, water, the earth, and very age appropriate for divided by K2, 3, 5, 6, 8, 9, 12. This was a collaboration between NASA and GBH, a five-year project, and we're very proud with the outcome of that. And then here are some other, um, I just thought I'd give you a smattering. So to um, just show you the range of other collections that are on the site. Uh, Rosie's Rules is a new program, a PBS Kids production, and there's a social studies tie into that. Pinkalicious is from GBH. It's an arts and creativity. And this for um, uh, elementary is produced by WNET out of New York and um, has gotten very good reviews. So I wanted to include that one also. All right, so um, we want you to help us do better. There is, this is a survey link and the survey um, is uh, handled by our research department. You can remain anonymous if you would like. Um, we try not to be too onerous and keep it to five or 10 minutes and ask you what you liked, what we can do better, et cetera. Um, at the end of taking the survey, you can download a certificate to um, confirm your participation. You can also take the survey if you watch the recording. So the survey will remain open until about April 26th. If you have any issues with finding the certificate or taking or whatever, just let me know. And then um, you might want to even just take a picture of this slide if you'd like, or you'll get some. You'll get this in the follow-up email. But we share a public version of the slides, the resource document, of course, the post-webinar survey. If you um, are not getting emails from us, if you did not find this webinar through an email, maybe you found it through social media or something, and you want to be on our email list. Um, 
we do not send out uh, emails uh, all the time. It, it, it's something that uh, it's not going to clutter your inbox, but we'd love to keep in touch with you and, and make sure you know of things that are going on. And then here's my contact information, carolyn underscore jacobs at wgbh.org. And you are welcome to email me with any questions or comments. I had mentioned at the beginning about educator ambassadors and that Amy and Judith were GBH educator ambassadors. If you are a Massachusetts teacher and you have an interest in learning more about the program, please let me know. And if you are not in Massachusetts and you would like an introduction to your local PBS station uh, to see what opportunities there are to work with them, stations all across the country are looking for teachers to work with. Um, if you have any questions about finding who to call in your area, let me know and I'll, I'll direct you.